up with a shot of the moon. <laughs> okay, here we are at Piacenza. Um, what's the story so far? Well, I've been struggling with the system. There's no question about that. It's not that it's overly complex rules-wise, although the, form, the, the uh, organization of the rules makes it difficult to catch some stuff. But there's some new concepts, and it's a cumbersome system. Beyond that, uh, the French have been trying to push their way around the left flank of the Austrians here, and at the same time are engaging uh, against some of the more fortified positions uh, that, well, the Spaniards mainly are engaging against some of the more fortified positions. The French goal, well, from the Austrian point of view, the French goal sits on four of these blue markers. The reality is I picked these four because I'm planning on that outflank taking them. That was a wise move because everything here is cav, or there's a lot of cav on this flank, and cav is really easy to scare away <laughs> in this system. Um, on the other hand, I'm having a hard time uh, doing much of anything coming up against uh, those, uh, those readouts. Anyway, we have pushed through three, three of the turns of the game. Not a hell of a lot has actually happened yet. Went over some of the basic... Uh, you know, some, some of the play mechanisms in some detail. And now it's time to step back and just, like, let the game play, I guess. Uh, I'm going to plug this in. That's it for tonight. Um, I don't know if I'll get to play tomorrow. I really ought to be going out and getting myself some vodka. <laughs> Great situation here. Uh, it is Friday, <laughs> kind of mid afternoon, which means I have to, you know, start getting more ready pretty soon. But, well, and the reason for that is I decided to go out and get vodka yesterday and ended up. Uh, Taking, making it a bit more of a hike, but I was, you know, I, I went wandering on walkabout, and uh, yeah, not too bad, like three and a half hours, four hours, instead of the two hours it would normally have taken, but uh, it wiped me out, and I was just too tired to come up and play, plus raid was kind of demanding, and could have been more demanding, I could have been playing through Trying to rush something today, but I'm just like, screw it. Anyway, I will get to some of this. Ah, jeez. I'm pretty sure I can't finish a turn. <laughs> but I want to do some. Uh, the reason I'm pretty sure I can't is we're starting to get into where uh, real engagement is happening. I've picked out some mistakes as well. Uh, so, for, for example... Uh, Somewhere, I think during my artillery fire, I didn't count the distance. Uh, penalty? For uh, an artillery piece. And something shouldn't have been a hit that was. It, it, it's not a big deal. Um, as you can see I, I, from, from the earlier video, I did get it right some of the times, but... Whenever you're facing me with a whole whole slew of modifiers presented, and you saw this in Summerstorm, if you watched that thing, I got trouble, and I miss them sometimes. <laughs> you know? um, that's just life. And eventually I'll start memorizing it, and probably become even more erratic in them. Or, more consistently, wrong. <laughs> When you give me big lists of uh, modifiers. Difficulty in disengaging. I think I am going to try to propel the left wing um, with the Austrians. Try to get it behind, uh, get my line behind this river line instead. Um, well, I don't know about 
all of that. Plus, I may be doing something new, which is converting units um, into their infantry because I'm really unhappy with Cav even on the flanks. It's just not. It's not effective enough, and especially dragoons, right? <laughs> For the French, I will probably continue to go with the right wing. They may not see, this may be a no matter what the Austrians are going to go first. So the French get to choose. I got no problem with letting the Austrians fall away. I decide to look uh, uh, up the Dragoon rolls, and here I'm able to find Dragoons can move freely but cannot end the movement in an engagement zone. They must dismount and enter line formation as soon as possible. Fine. Uh, you decide uh, at the deployment. Talks about what they do. You know what it doesn't tell me? Nowhere in here does it tell me how much it costs to change formation. Is I don't think that's in the terrain effects chart. I don't know where it tells me. I would assume it would be under the Dragoon's rules. So now, I spend time hunting the rules to find where that might be. Like, I'm pretty sure there was a cost. You don't just mount or dismount for free. Uh, but, I got no idea where to find it now. Again. Not thrilled, uh, not thrilled with the way the rules work. So it, if it was free, it should have said so under Dragoons. If it has a cost, it should tell you the cost under Dragoons, even if it's stated somewhere else, somewhere much less findable. I mean, am I just missing something? At the beginning of the movement phase, every two mounted can be replaced by dismounted. Well, it appears, uh, yeah, it, it appears to me that like, there's just no cost. So I will do that because I'm not at all thrilled with how cavalry operates. Fortunately for me, this formation does not have a lot of infantry. It has a, a, a lot of cav that's real cav. I've converted two, uh, the two dragoons into infantry that I have in this formation. Um, now I have to figure out how to define a line, and I gotta be careful. So like this guy, he can't just pull back to here, he's gotta make a die roll to do it, so I'm gonna have to move this, and I have no idea, you know, shifting, shifting the line, what am, I, what am I gonna define? I think I'm gonna try to define something along here, um, but I don't know how well that's gonna work. This is more or less what I get to, and no, I didn't actually have to define the line because I'm going to, I'm falling back far enough away from the enemy that I don't actually have to be in linear formation. Um, I got other units of the wing I got to move though too. So let's take a look, see, that's a, okay, that's already, ca that's already infantry. So this formation, I just guess I pull back. And is that it? Just two divisions or whatever? You think so? <laughs> In that left wing? Uh, uh, it's another thing that's hard to find is, I'm, I'm finding because this color up here is so prominent, this little corner is much, much harder to see. And I'm finding myself having a hard time finding the wing that I'm moving as opposed to, uh, you know, whatever it is, the, the, the actual formations. It does make some sense that the actual formations uh, be a distinguished and clear coloring, but the wing is such a, such a minuscule thing in that little corner, especially when it's just, you know, basically invisible ink. <laughs> that yellow is not visible to me. I find myself doing some decidedly non-linear things because my formation would have to roll a die to make a move across the river or a stream or whatever to get, you know, within... Who's down there? Oh, hi. <laughs> um, to get uh, across the stream. So, 
I have to create a nonlinear formation in order to not avoid having to, in order to avoid having to roll a die. I'm also having a real problem. I'm trying to get my cav around to the flank where it doesn't matter so much that I have cav. Like, it's not such a bad thing. It's just, yeah. And it's getting in the way of my other units. Any attempt to try to reorganize your formation, and this is absolutely reasonable historically, uh, it's just a pain in the royal ass. Um, I'm trying to get these guys to the left, to the right flank. Well, that's not easy to do, but they have stupid cav. I, again, I'm blaming the initial setup as being really, really ineffective for <laughs> this kind of warfare. Um, I'm assuming it was historically derived, but man, it's causing me problems because I know that, you know, this cav uh, that's over on the flank here, I, I want this on the flank. I do not want that in, in my unit. So we're on another, another set. And gosh, I don't know. <laughs> like with Summer Storm, I'm kind of feeling disinclined to fight battles. <laughs> like the concept of fighting and again it's a heavy heavy uh heavy modifiers based system where i have to go down this whole fucking line to figure out what's going on and everything um it's kind of cumbersome in ways that uh, th there's an alienness to it that feels not necessarily terribly justified and that's generating cumbersome effects and, and the presentation it's just not easy you know i have to work my way through this and then through this chart it's again summer storm was worse summer storm basically had a whole column this long a page, the size of a page of modifiers you had to deal with this is getting closer to what i can cope with i was managing to memorize the ones in summer storm i don't know if i will in this uh but anyway what does that mean I want to do? Well, I don't know. I'll move the center because <laughs> these guys are just too fucking complex. And I want to avoid doing them, you know? <laughs> and whatever. And then... Uh, see, there's a really strong reason for me not to activate the center. Um for the Austrians, and that is that my artillery fire is more effective once they close, so I kind of want to do it after they do it. So I'll do the reserve whose artillery needs to get into place anyhow. The French get first pick, they'll force the Austrians to go. Now in terms of movement, my plan to move forward with this center it's causing me real issues because I don't have a tight enough defensive line up here that makes me happy. I've got holes in it, but I can't just plug those holes. <laughs> that will break my linear formation. Um, correct, correct, correct. Something doesn't, command and control doesn't get affected by that, yeah. Um, sorry, I've been away for a while. And I can't afford to move those this is similar to chit pull systems again, where, yeah, I can't replace the units the way I want to. I can't reorganize my forces because everything's not moving at once, which is accurately it would be, but it would also be more difficult to manage those maneuvers than an, a straight I go you game would allow. A straight I go you game. I go, you go, would allow me to pull these units back and shove these units into, into the front and whatever. And that's too much flexibility, but the systems, I think it's better to have too little than too much, but <laughs> either way, you're getting it wrong. What, what should be happening is forces should be moving at the same time. You should be able to um, coordinate. Sure, it's between wings, might be difficult, but 
these guys would move up right behind the opposing units and be able to replace them as they leave. You could, you could arrange that kind of uh, formation uh, replacement. And that actually is very important in linear combat, being able to move another line up in replacement. Not necessarily marching that way, though, which, okay. Um, and now I get the choice of firing. And I have the advantage of being able to fire two of my units at one of his. And that'll give me the edge, because this is the only guy who can fire back. Okay, I'm outflanked here, I think. And here, I'm not behind defensive terrain. But that gives him a tougher choice. I do have defensive terrain for where I'm outflanked. Now I have the obnoxious situation of trying to def determine what this terrain means that I'm shooting into. It's got this block building, which appears important, like more than this, but I think it's one of these. So that's level one cover. I got two of these little loops here which I don't think are these, I think those are wheat fields. Wheat fields appear not to be fields at all, but these little weird things. I don't know why there's so many different types of clear terrain. Some of them have an effect, but not most of them. Um, so I think I've got level one cover for that. A couple of days ago, I had gotten really comfortable with the fire table, at least, maybe making mistakes, but, you know, I could say, okay, that's three strength points, but I know it goes back one because of this, but now I'm finding myself struggling with it once again, you know, again, if I play it as much as I did Summerstorm, I probably would get familiar with it, but and I've got a, oh, what the hell, you're pooping in my yard? <laughs> um, I've got a, uh, no, they don't poop like that. They, what the hell is it doing? Am I seeing a birth? I don't, it can't be. Yeah. Is there a leg sticking out or something? Oh my. Yeah, I don't want to disturb that, but, and I seem to have, wow. Yeah, I've never seen one squat. Like when they poop, it just drops out. When they pee, it just comes out. Um, they're not like dogs. So I think she's giving another birth. She already had one fawn walking around. Doesn't look too fresh. They're dropping them like flies. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so where the, well, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm finding myself having a lot more struggle with the system, you know, coming back to it. Like, I've fought my way to understand, to, to being able to internalize some of the, the functionality, and now it's hard again. <laughs> the net effect of that fire was I got a changing on here. He made his saving throw or whatever for having, you know, additional ranks. This guy failed his and got a Disorder Retreat 3. Both got a Disorder Retreat. Um, this one, chance of losing the leader. I didn't lose the leader, but that's about equivalent to the saving throw chance. So, you know, <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, so we've been driven from there, and now I think that's the end of his activation. And now I go to the center over here and start pushing those forward, swinging them into place against uh, the main Austrian line. And I'm hoping this thing can spread out enough that the outflank just pretty much just wins me the game. So the, having moved ha about half my force and uh, about half the turn's worth of troops, but I'm fatigued from the lookups. Shit like, hey, do I have to lose the unit or whatever? Got a bit of a headache too. I dyed my hair and sometimes it gives me one. Um, that's going to put me to two more. I'm going to take a break. It's fucking hot, too. It's like 90, 90 degrees already. It's going to get up to about 96 or so. Um, but yeah, I, just really having trouble 
maneuvering the forces into place, I'm finding it a lot harder to sort of see what's happening than I was in, say, Banish All Their Fears, uh, which, you know, kind of... Different, different era of linear combat, um, but I, I do like that the linear combat it feels more real here than I think it did in the Battles of the Age of Reason games. Like, may, maybe I'm mis mistaking that. Maybe I, I, you know, I have to go back and v revisit those um, and play all of them this time, not just one, and say, ah, I really didn't enjoy this. Just like I played Summerstorm for a long time, I cannot enjoy a game for a long time before <laughs> quitting, right? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but this is, uh, this is feeling like and giving me a headache to play. It really is. The sort of chick choice that you're putting up here is one of the few real decisions in the game, so I kind of try to highlight that. I mean, look, you know, these tactical combat games tend not to have a lot of real important decision making. And this is one that this game introduces, where you get to choose which formation you're going to move first. So here, uh, I'm doing the left wing. Why? Because uh, it's the meatiest and the hardest to cope with. But mainly because I wanted to find space, push uh, away, and make some room for whatever the hell is here. Uh, I don't know. Is that the reserve? That's the center. Um, make some room for that and, you know, see what that left reserve actually has to deal with. For them, I'm taking the right wing so that I can hold off on that artillery as long as possible. We have an Austrian act first. We're going to force the French to go with their left wing, or Spaniards, as the case really is. Now, the interesting thing here is there's kind of an opening, <laughs> but can I define a line with one formation that takes advantage of that opening? Especially, okay, this changing doesn't do much, but it does take away some of my resilience. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be kind of tough. This is unfortunately one big formation, which means I probably can't actually take advantage of this. Um, I could have if I, I would get some advantage out of it if I had attacked and gained the ground, but the defender doesn't get to advance. Oh well. In terms of defining a line now, I'm going to define a line here for this unit. Okay. And then this other one, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's probably going to be a line coming down this way, which is not optimal. <laughs> but because I'm facing this stupid corner here, I've got to do some weird shit that doesn't feel all that linear. Like it would feel more linear uh, to be able to maybe push through a little bit. But yeah, there's problems with that. I ended up with a broken line very early here, but then I just define a different line here for these three units. Now this guy is going to be penalized, so I may not want to shoot with him. He's... I don't know what the ranges are in this. we got a scale. We've got to have a scale here. I can't imagine a game of this type There we go. <laughs> the distance is about 300 meters. And now I'm trying to think of... <sighs> you could make an argument they're not in effective enough range to really engage all that hard. So, because, yeah, 300 meters is pretty damn far. Of course, that's corner to co that's a uh, side to side which means we're somewhere between you know <laughs> I don't know maybe 75 meters and 200 somewhere in there but there's enough fuzz that I can say yeah I it makes sense that he won't choose to fire 
I'm sorry, he won't choose to fire. Now he's still going to undergo an attack by that artillery when the artillery gets an action, or might. Um, but the fact that I wasn't able to get everybody up probably means I don't want to fire all my guns at once and explode into space. All right, now we got these fuckers, and these guys are much more problematic. Like, this guy's going to try to withdraw here, because I'm going to be defining the line coming down this way. Perhaps good, we were unable to withdraw into this space, because we're still going to have all the benefits of being able to fire that unit. It's still adjacent to a, another unit of its same formation, etc. This guy couldn't join the line... Um, I guess I could try to wander him down that way, but that seems goofy, so I'm just going to hold him in place. I couldn't really replace the unit. Uh, again, it, it's just too hard to do, because this guy's in line and had no way to get into a different line. I, I don't know, I could have extended further down or something, but all right. Now it's time for me to select the fires. Makes sense to select as few as you can. So like these two, they'll fire at this. All of these, I'm actually going to throw this in. I'll fire at that. Just to prevent the reciprocal fire from doing much. Um, over here, I have an option. I can either gang up on this or gang up on that. I might throw in the extra unit. Kind of have to declare them all ahead of time, but... We're going to start over here. Just because I know what I'm doing there. I implied something incorrectly. There's no advance after fire combat anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I managed to clear that unit with a route, and that's kind of cool. The game doesn't really provide any uh, markers for this unit took a hit. Now, I could flip it over, but that doesn't really adequately represent the situation. It was from this first fire here. It's going to get a shot back, but I got all these other fires to take that are going on it, and... You know, I just have to cope with uh, some kind of marker. So I'm just throwing a little marker there to say, hey, it's been hit. If it takes another hit, then I'm fine because it's gone. And I can just resolve its fire. Even more such markers. I've got a disorder here and a retreat one, which I have to cope with. That's going to actually retreat me two hexes. As I do the second hit, now I just keep making my way over. The defensive terrain is giving me a minus one, and not because of the flanking fire, but yeah, it's not that great. I'm going to pump any smoke out here. Uh, well, not going not gonna to fire a second fire. And feel the attacks that I'm making that would still be left, this one might have been worth doing if I had failed simply because I would have high expectations of success with so many units with the flanking fire and everything but I got pretty good results I routed one unit disordered another and have cleared some of the space and that's going to be very hard for the Austrians um, to figure out a line that allows them to take all the territory that they want to be in so I may be losing so I could definitely line here but the other thing is making another line here, eh, maybe, you know. I got some disordered shit and everything. That makes it more problematic. Um, and that's going to be this. I will do one more activation for the right wing here. Figure out what the hell is going on. I got this here. That's, that's the one place that I might want to do something. I don't know if I have anything that I want to do with there. I may have ended up in an illegal situation, actually. These are Spaniards here. They moved somehow past this and ended up here. Now, I think they have to. Like, assuming they attacked here, I think they had to advance where they did. But they're not allowed to be in a zone of control of an infantry unit. And that means I'm going to have to look up rules to figure out whether or not that's allowable um, and what could have happened. Because that's causing me problems, right? I, I have to do something about that, I guess. As I look under the rules titled Cavalry, which should be a whole section, doesn't have cav movement and it doesn't de de deal with this. It is possible to advance 
in, into a situation like this. I think I'm just stuck there. This may be one of those few situations where uh, infantry, I, I don't know how I got here, to be honest, because you only advance one hex. I don't know. Maybe I had two two attacks. I, no, that doesn't happen. I, I feel like something illegal happened to get me in this position. I don't know what to do about it. Um, I'm probably going to shoot at them <laughs> for whatever that's worth. But I kind of shouldn't be allowed to. I almost feel like these guys should just be back here or something. I, I don't know how they got here. Like it was something illicit. I probably moved next to this not realizing that was infantry and charged by. I'm just going to fling them back here. I think that's the best solution I have. They probably couldn't have made the attack that they did. And now I have to try to figure out what the hell I do with, uh, with my cav and other units that are here. And I really don't have an answer for that either. Like this just... It's just so fucking weird with me with uh, Bastions and Cav. Um, I don't think the Cav has to conform to linear formation at all. So I think I can do something like this. But the whole like... The whole penalty where you have to make a training die roll yeah, I think I'd have to do that still. I don't know. It, it's weird because I'm not, a, like line formation sounds like it's everything. But then it talks about a set of two infantry units are in a line if. There's no discussion of lines. A line can be composed only of infantry units. And it's under the line movement I think, maybe not. I'm just trying to get a grasp. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I have to make a die roll if I want to move into this space. I think I do. I think I do. And I definitely want to be in that space to prevent him from pushing back through. Well, I guess I've gathered all up there. I'm not gonna attack anything. I don't wanna attack. We'll flip that over. And we're on the next action there. I don't have the will to do these last two right now. Um, one of that would be this, which is relatively complicated. Oh look, these guys didn't move. Because I couldn't tell. I can't tell the fucking corners. The corners are too hard. They're just too hard. It's fine that he didn't move. And I'll leave it be. But ideally he probably would have shifted down this way. Um, to try to further uh, collapse things. But yeah. I'm, I'm just at the point where the system is so cumbersome and so painful. That it is indeed again causing, just like with Summer Storm, causing me to make blunders in play that might be more ahistorical than the historical aspects that it's trying to represent. I'm not sure here. I'm kind of okay with the idea of a unit not advancing. Um, I feel like units are too often able to advance and maybe the inability to be able to tell what's part of a wing and whatever actually adds some realism that the game really wouldn't add otherwise or have otherwise in terms of failed uh, orders essentially failing and stuff. This has no, no real order system. It just has a really, really painful movement system. This is not the solution that I like, right? <laughs> like, I don't want it to depend on me playing poorly to make the game work realistically, if that's the case. But it may actually be doing that. It's like 2 p.m. on Sunday. I'm really not feeling it, but I want to get uh, I want to get this activation in. Then I think I'll go sit outside and read for a while or something. Uh...
kind of in a form of depression. Now, you could say you're always depressed, dude. Yeah, but I'm almost always sad and I'm almost always at a baseline of depression, but now I'm at like this. Where I'm not really all that miserable or sad or anything, I just want to fucking sleep all the time. <laughs> like, nothing sounds good, and this certainly doesn't. All right, let me roll. We got just two more for each. French get the choice first. They are activating their left reserve. I'm gonna, I, I know what I, I force for the uh, Austrians, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna force them to uh, fire their artillery now. I want to point out all my, you know, my situation here. I want to, I want to try to rationalize these forces and get them closer together, get them so that they can support each other. But the intermingling of one command with another is causing me real problems. Now I'm trying to do that again. I'm trying to do something where I basically replace units with another formation and I'm finding that to be almost impossible to do. Yes, my intention was to slide over, but you can't move from one zone to another. I can't back into these hexes. Um, I feel like the things I'm trying to do are just not legitimate within the system. Now, should they be, shouldn't they be? I don't know. At this scale, it's one of the problems when you're comparing games to reality. Look, a unit should be able to relieve a unit in front of it in a linear situation. But if they're of other wings, well, there's a reason that you have like the wing boundaries in uh, Banish All Their Fears. Uh, you can't do that in that. And you, you also would have trouble um, even with just a different formation up there. To, to replenish a unit. So, I don't know. <laughs> like, maybe I'm trying to do something that I just shouldn't be doing. But again, it's sort of a, it's an emergent property of the system rather than something that I'm clearly being told I can't do. So I feel like, yeah, I've sort of blundered forward trying to do something that maybe I should have been told no, you just can't do this, you know? And again, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like I have enough of a grasp of the history and, and, and the reality of the situation. And when you're talking about, honestly, any game, but any game in which uh, the design is a little different from others, whether it's for historical reasons or whatever, um, I feel like the designer's notes should kind of give you a clue as to, you know, why things work the way they do and some discussion of that. That, that always helps me. Here, I'm just like, eh, you know, <laughs> I'm, moving, I'm moving one formation, you know, right? I, it's like a chip pull. It's a pulsed system. I'm moving one formation, and I'm not really thinking about the collateral effects all that much on other formations. And then when I try to move the other formation, I'm just like, well, I'm fucked. Great. Well, that's fantastic. Right side. Although I won't be able to move a unit up here. <laughs> um, I was able to get in here. These guys are still in command, so I can fire with them if I so desire. Which I probably do. Comes up. I'm about to fire my artillery because that I have to fire before I fire the infantry, which is going to create smoke. I haven't been too careful about putting my smoke markers down for whatever reason. Um, that one I think fired. I'm not absolutely certain it did. It's been a long time. It's not going to affect anything either way. But I'm going to fire here. And I, I had the notice of uh, all artillery has a five strength point. Yet there's a, this one to two PF space on here. There's no place for three PFs. It, it's kind of just weird. It's like, I have the feeling this was designed for some system. Or maybe the game was going to um, provide battalion guns as separate firing conditions or whatever. But... Uh, 
everything has exactly the same firepower and it's five there's nothing that gets you on here and uh, this obviously isn't going to handle the whole range of possible numbers because three is missing it's all just really weird to me um it may be an artifact of something else anyway I'll keep using it as it is. Obviously, you need this column to be able to shift to, but you don't need the strength points on it because artillery is just artillery. So why have a strength point number on it at all? Yeah, I don't know. The thing I'm not familiar with, I'm used to kind of a withdrawal fire type thing, and the reaction fire accomplishes that. When you move out of an enemy zone of control, they get to shoot at you. There's penalties for it, whatever. It actually applies to retreats as well. So I actually would have gotten a shot here. It would have been at massive minuses. I'll do it this time. Um, the reason I noted it was because Cav, when they withdraw, don't suffer the withdrawal fire, the reaction fire. Um, but yeah, so this guy should have gotten shot at. Now let me just take a look at what we're looking at. We're looking at the three column. It's not a dense unit, so I don't go down any. And I don't know if I have a commander anywhere near now. Um, I've got smoke. Which gives, so I've got like a minus five on my table, which I think means I have almost no chance of doing anything. I could get, yeah, I, I can't do anything. Uh, disordered on a disordered unit. I don't remember if that has an effect. I don't think so. I know that if it was a single fire, it wouldn't have an effect. Oh, there's a chance of routing. Yeah, so there, there actually could be an effect here. An 8 minus 5 gets me to a 3, which is a disorder. So now he has to actually have made... He had a DR2. This could end up being a Route 3. Um, he's a Spanish infantry. And he's at... Uh, there's a modifier to this shit. Right? Plus two die modifier. But he ends up holding up anyway. Um, he had a fairly good chance of routing from that. The artillery fired and then the infantry fired as he was running away. But through the smoke, it uh, wasn't likely to happen. I haven't been very careful about the reaction fire. I don't even know if I did any. I know I pulled away here from some units. And I don't think uh, I... Don't think I I did it at all. It's weird because if I fire at units, the way this is what really disturbs me about it. And I don't think this is intentional. Let's find it. Leaving an enemy ZOC causes reaction fire by enemy units exerting with a die roll modifier minus three in addition to any other standard mouth uh, fire modifier. If I fire at a unit, I get a round of volley. My second round of volley, which I may or may not take, has some risk. I haven't been doing that because I don't want the risk. But now I get this third free round of volleying uh, because they're leaving. And I'm not really sure. Uh, like, if there's some other effect of it. And then also in melee, and, and, and this is why I don't like this, is that, okay, wait, retreat after combat for a cavalry refusal? No, that's something different. Yeah, it, it makes it sound like a retreat after a melee, I get to form up and fire another shot into their backs as well. Which, uh, basically, every time that you cause a unit to retreat, you get a free shot at it. I have not been doing that, um, because that's really an alien concept in, in most firepower games. Most firepower games, you get your effect, 
and, and you just resolve it, right? <laughs> and if they freely try to move out of your hex, you don't get you you get to fire at them for that because they're giving up. You're giving up. What's happening is you're losing an opportunity to fire that you would have gotten against them while they withdraw. But here it's as if their withdrawal is so disorganized that they're stumbling around in your accurate fire range. Now, there's lots of penalties. That, that accounts for the disorganization of the retreating units. I'm, I really don't like that rule, the way, the way it's written. Um, I'm not sure I want to play with it. I, I dislike it so much. I kind of don't mind that my artillery fired and, hey, I lost a firing opportunity. I get to shoot now. I really don't like if I'm firing or meleeing and that causes the retreat for that to uh, generate any kind of retreat fire. I don't know. I discovered a counter that doesn't seem to have a purpose. It's a fired marker. Now, the artillery flips over and has its fired side. Guess you could put this on infantry units temporarily or something. I don't know what it would do. Um, but yeah, I just disordered this grenadier unit. And now if I was playing by the rules, oh, that infantry caused this to retreat. Uh, uh, uh. How about that? Um, if I was playing by the rules, I would get another shot at this guy. Let's see what that looks like. So, I have a minus, or no, I have a fuck, I'm having so much trouble with this. I have a plus one, just part of it's like the counters are, are different looking than I'm used to and everything, but it's hard. So I have a very strong fire. Um, this would be, with a reaction fire minus three. It doesn't count. No, I think I had an unaligned fire there. Fucking hell. Uh, you know, you give me so many fucking modifiers. So this guy doesn't have anybody adjacent to him. So actually, he, he wouldn't have even hit this. Screw it. <laughs> he didn't even hit because he was unaligned fire and that's the same problem I think this guy has he doesn't have the same formation next to him so he doesn't uh, he doesn't he wouldn't have gotten a bonus now I didn't fire him I don't know why like I fired my artillery which I have to do first I, I guess Oh, I, I just I just fucking ignored these guys. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah, this is on the French turn. I've completely forgot to fire. I have a huge firepower advantage here. But I'm finding the system so painful to play with. In part because it's a modifier based system. <laughs> I do not operate well with those. And when there's enough modifiers, I'm really struggling. And yeah. <laughs> uh it's like, either go down the list every fucking time, but you start doing that, you start forgetting things like, oh, I got some units there that could fire. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. So, at the same time as fire is happening here, I'm actually also getting meleeed here. Now, if I recall correctly, only one of those units can melee. This isn't a charge. I don't remember anything. I'm really not happy with this one. One of the things is, when a game starts generating problems for me, it starts generating problems I wouldn't normally have. Right? And, but I'm having to go back to the rules, look shit up all the time, because this is defeating so many of my expectations. Um, that whole concept of like, yeah, I can fire at guys as they run away, stuff like that. That, that just destroys so many of my expectations that I'm like scrambled and I may forget things, like whether to fire these guys. I have an easier time missing out on 
the cumbersome system that uses modifiers. It's not as bad as Summer Storm, but it's bad. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, now, now I'm just frustrated with the, I have to look up another fucking rule. I've already come up here and I've looked up three rules to try to, to try to play just, you know, one activation, two activations, and I fucked everything up in the, in the process. Not a pleasant way to enjoy uh, gaming. Now, again, the choices that are made here might be valid ones, <laughs> but they're so at odds, although I think that firing at guys running away is not. Um, they're so at odds with the commonality of, uh, of gaming that I can't rely on my memory at all, and I'm constantly looking back at a not all that well-written rule book. The same issue with Summer Storm, but yeah. <laughs> Just having the same kind of fun again and again. Hey, did I tell you VJ Anagra was kind of fun? <laughs> yeah, I struggled with that too, because it's coin, but and and coin is always a challenge because you're basically learning a whole new system, even with every single game of it, because everybody's got different um, different menu options. But less unpleasant than this. Oh, puzzling out infantry melee. An infantry unit of an activated formation can declare a melee against an adjacent infantry and or artillery. Okay. That's for infantry. I'm dealing with cav melee here. But I think it's the same. Follows the prescriptions of pair, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's resolved between adjacent hexes and with the same procedure. Now here it says, a cavalry unit may declare a melee. Now I think the one time I did a, a melee, I did it with two cav units that were stacked. And that may not be allowed. Everything says, a unit. Which means that the odds are going to be one to one. Pretty much. Like I don't see how you get much... Uh, Guess beating up on other kinds of units because the calf has a lot of strength. Um, somewhere, yeah, calf engaging. I fucking hate trying to figure the game out by looking at the examples. But here, calf engagement. Yeah, the cav is trying to advance against the infantry. We don't have an actual melee. As far as I can tell. Given an example. And <laughs> the rules seem to imply only one unit in the stack gets to attack. Even though I can stack two cav units together. It also seems to imply that only one unit out of all my four units that I've gotten here gets to attack. Let's take a look at modifiers, see if they help. Okay, flank, cav, melee, or charge, 10.4. Now, flanking usually requires multiple units attacking, right? Cav unit conducts, receives a flank bonus. If at least one other cav of the same formation is adjacent, but not adjacent to the attacking, yeah. Um, what's not clear and I thought was elsewhere, was that only one stat, one unit, whatever, is allowed to melee. So, I can melee with only one unit at a time, fine. But the question is, can I hit them with two or four units one at a time? Now, I thought there was something that said no to that, but I haven't seen it. Eh, I don't know if I had the movement to get in there. I probably did. No, only one, may only be subject to one infantry or cavalry melee combat. Each always involves one counter on each side. Yeah, wow, that's... That's pretty shitty. Now, I think I don't get the defensive terrain bonus there. OK. 
because I'm writing down the thing. Uh, this will be under the cover rules. Got to look up something else now, right? I got to look up because I know there's something that allows me to move or something down there without an extra cost of movement points. But I'm not sure I'm allowed to attack down. And it kind of doesn't make sense that a bunch of cav would be charging down the redoubt. But, well, here's the thing. The redoubt is basically a breastworks. So if I'm on the other side of the breastworks, it does make sense that I'd be able to plow into them without any effect. Which means now we start hunting for... Well, we might see that, and yeah, this, this is where, you know, I'm, I'm at the point where a game is no longer fun, right? You know, <laughs> was it ever fun? It showed some hints of it. I usually like tactical gunfire, gunpowder, uh, you know, type firing mechanisms and everything. This one is just irritating me, and I don't really feel like I'm able to draw away from it with any kind of, yeah, I see why they did this this way. It just feels fucking horrible. Okay. Well, let's look for terrain. It'll be here. It doesn't look like there's any mon any uh, any effect there. It looks like I have to deal with that. So no matter what, I have to deal with that. So I'm dealing with a one-to-one -one attack with terrain effects here. Melee combat allowed DRM minus two. No cavalry combat in. Ah, oh, neat. And no ZOC, which may mean something else. Okay, no ZOC means that I could have shifted a unit here. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That's just like buried in this horrible text here. I'm getting real close to just quitting this thing. Okay, so I'm not allowed to attack these. So Cav defending behind um, uh, behind some kind of redoubt is absolutely invulnerable, it turns out. Shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm butchering this thing, but I feel like I'm butchering it for various reasons, like the typeface being used here, right? That is unreadable to me and unabsorbable. If I couldn't absorb something from, from the rule book, uh, something as important as Cav can't attack um, other Cav, Right, And of course, infantry moves up there, they chase the cav away. So cav is either completely invulnerable or afraid to stand. <laughs> One or the other. All right, well, we're done with this turn. We'll see, if, we'll see if I have the willpower to come up and play any more of this. But I'm really getting sick of this game. <laughs> I, I, you know, once upon a time, I would have struggled through. I probably would have restarted, to tell you the truth. But I don't see it getting any better. I just I feel like the 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 mechanisms are just too unpleasant. Um, and maybe it, and the presentation of the rules and everything it's just really fucking annoying me. So what do we get? Reorganization at the end of turn. We try to return to good order. Great. Can I get rid of my smoke yet? When do I get rid of my smoke? That's afterwards, which is important because smoke is a penalty. I'm definitely walking away for a while. I don't know how long, but yeah, this was, uh, this was just a miserable experience. And what, what, what's recovered? I don't know. I don't even fucking care. Again, you know, you make a game too cumbersome and painful for my tastes, and I stop giving a shit about it, right? I stop being able to even try. I, I stop even trying to find the narrative. What the fuck happened here? Well, some cab marched up and demonstrated or something, right? So some units came forward. These guys, well, they could have moved, but they didn't. You know? <laughs> These guys chose not to fire for unexplicable reasons. It's just... 
the play stops being at all historically accurate because the system is too cumbersome, right? Now, you could say, well, I'm smarter than you, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't fuck up like that. Maybe, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, I just know that I'm having a hard time with this. And you can say, well, you have hard times with a lot of things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And usually I can bumble through. Even with Summer Storm, I was able to bumble through. This... <sighs> As unpleasant as some of the stuff in Summerstorm was, this is feeling more unpleasant to me. Now, I don't know if it's just my emotional state or what. I, I, I got no argument for it. Um, it may be, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with how the battle is developing. This is turning into just this mess where people are colliding with each other and unable to form up and everything. At least I was able to get some nice, you know, lines of combat and everything going over in Summerstorm. Here, I'm so restricted by, by the system that, and maybe, again, maybe rightfully so, but I'm so restricted by the movement rules and by the, um, by the, the deployments, I can't even get guys who, who are, you know, well behind the lines and don't have to follow any kind of special linear rules or anything, I can't get them to get where I want them to be. <laughs> because one command is getting in the way of another and everything. And some of it has to do with pulsed activity. Pulsed activity causes real problems. I don't know if you just have to leave channels and, you know, march your people around. There's also a time limit to this thing. Um, the French have to make an attack. So me bumbling around is losing me a valuable resource. Let's keep going at it because the rules to the thing I'm reading next are even worse. <laughs> I don't know. They just seem really painful to me. Um, so again, choosing this flank over here, the Austrian left, and the Austrians go first. We're going to force the French to go first. We might end up engaged by doing that. Mm, do we want to take a chance? Mm, do we want to? Do we want to? I don't know. Withdrawing behind the river would require a die roll. That would be painful. Uh, let's go. Let's let's get behind that river on our own. Of course, is. I kind of want to open some space up here, but I don't know how. <laughs> I just don't know how. Trying to separate the center of the line so that I have enough spaces for whatever I want to push forward, it just doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like, uh, if I was working this in a full I go, you go, yeah, I could figure it out. Uh, somehow, I managed to figure out such things pretty easily and banish all their fears. There's just too many units trying to collide with each other in this. Son of a bitch. I thought, it, and I'm just going to say fuck it and throw these back wherever. Um, I thought these guys were trying to get around the flank. They're not the guys who are. <sighs> I'm looking... These guys are the guys who are trying to get around the flank, but they're really not. I need to get the cav around the flank. These guys are part of this center formation here. And again, really hard to distinguish, right? I mean, the color is, is not the same. They're clearly different. It's just, I had this memory of a bunch of cav that I wanted to get around the flank. Well, <laughs> cav is not really useful in the center of my army, but that's where it fucking is. And I still can't get over that. Um, I'll try moving again. I was going to try to swing these guys around so that, that I could push other people into other locations, you know, and tight, uh, create a more tight uh, foundation. Now, I could swing the entire center around. I would have wanted to do that right at the beginning of the game, to put the center over on the right instead. Um, clearly, I don't have time to do that. So, yeah, I guess these are the guys who are supposed to be there. Are, are these, these are all infantry. 
yeah, I don't know, uh, I don't know why, I was under this impression that I had to get um, some caver onto the flank. Maybe I had these misidentified before as well. When you just give me that little corner stripe, yeah, I, it's just not working for me, man. It's just not working. It's not registering. In our attempts to do this outflank, this is the best we got because we're trying to bring lines up forward and everything, and it's just, it's too fucking, like, clunky to move anything. Part of it is this three movement point allowance where it costs an extra movement point to cross any kind of waterway, costs an extra movement point to enter any kind of cover. <laughs> you know, whether, whether or not you're, you're taking the cover, it costs you. So like, I have to avoid this fortress because that would cost me two movement point to enter. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I get it with the stream. I don't get why I can't just bypass this building um, without disrupting my whole formation. And it is disrupting my movement, right? Like, you know, these guys are a hex behind because they couldn't move into here. I decided to move these guys down. They hadn't moved at all. The, the reason I'm moving them down is to make some room for these Spaniards, but... Oh, are they? Yeah, they're the same color. Great. <laughs> Instead of just what I see, like all I kind of register is, oh, there's a line there. And the line kind of matches the line of the color. So yeah, these things are dark. These are dark, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, who am I choosing now? Well, um, gosh, I guess I'll choose the reserve even though I don't think I can do much with them. And over here, what do I want to choose? I want to hold off as long as possible and go with the center. Make a roll. French get to choose first. They're going to force the Austrians to go first. Son of a bitch, I would have had to choose the center to go first, which I always choose last, to shift here without leaving that hole there. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, What's up with these guys? These guys, I get, uh, even though they're different color units, like this is tan, this is white, they have the same color stripe. The main color is their nationality color, I guess. I don't know what that tan means in comparison. I thought these were all Austrians. Um, but, you know, I've got the same kind of issue with the French and Spaniards. Sometimes they're aligned in the same, same formation even. Uh, certainly in the same wing and what color attracts my attention first the main one for the counter right <laughs> not so you, what doesn't this little tiny corner down here that I don't even fucking see uh, but yeah I'm trying uh, to figure out what I can do with my center here I can't get my artillery on the line first of all they'd have to roll a die I think to get there but secondly, they only have two movement points. So like the guy who was next to this could enter here and then the other guy slipped around behind. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's fucking ridiculous. I think there's just too much of a traffic jam. This guy didn't make it into his hex that he was aiming for. Um, that means that I can't do much here. I could try to shift that in, but I can't define a line. So I don't think I actually can. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, yep. And now I get to shoot if I remember to do so. That firing uh, mainly cleared the line. Oh, wait. I get to shoot at him some more as he retreats. I forgot about that. Uh, that was at this routing guy. And at the other guy. Well, we both retreated from the other one. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up leaving the river line. Both sides ran away. <laughs> Again, hard to believe situation. I don't see two units laying down fire, both retreating, but that is how it works. As far as I can tell, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, melee combat may be different, but for fire combat, uh, 
Nothing's listed there. If we go to the retreat rules, wherever the hell they are. Oh, where they are. I think they'd be like under the fire effects where it says. No. Doesn't appear to be. I don't know. I don't think I care enough. <laughs> I really don't. I can't find retreats. Got this order and route, but that's not what it is. I, I think both arm, both forces can be flung away from each other. There's somewhere where it has something about retreat because it talks about being able to retreat through the enemy units. I know that. That's probably in stacking. No, no. <laughs> yeah, there's hardly anything there. <laughs> yeah. Just finding this too difficult to, to determine anything out of it. I think it would be here under fire effects, right? That, that's where I would put it. Not just, oh, for application, see, 8.51. Okay, maybe, maybe I missed something. How to apply? No. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, and here where retreat is discussed in another place, only the same thing is put there. I, I'm just looking to see if there's anything. Oh, wait, retreat after combat. No, that's not it. It's for, and for cavalry refusal. Um, it, it is not possible to retreat over enemy units or through forbidden terrain. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, two hexes in the same hex force to retreat. No, there's nothing about two, two units firing at each other and both breaking. That seems unlikely. It really does. It really does. <laughs> but anyway, that's what happened. But I do have this fire here, which was at this unit that's routed, running away from the guns. Now, unfortunately, I am under smoke. Uh, I was like three strength points, I think, maybe four. I don't know. Can't tell. There's two numbers there. One of them, okay, one of them's combat. That'll be... Ah, I keep counting the cav as five. They're not. They're ones and twos. <laughs> I mean, I'm just having trouble with everything with this game, somehow. And again, it's... You start compounding errors and more start creating. Um, anyway. So yeah, this will be the fire value is four. Oh no, it's artillery that that I was saying is all five. Yeah, artillery's all five. Not calf. Oh, what was that? I didn't actually roll any calf combat there because none was allowed. They could just march up to each other and, and demonstrate, basically. So it was four. There's no longer two ranks. I got smoke, though, and this is reaction fire, which means I'm at, like, minus five on this die roll. Which is still possible to do something? I don't know. I don't think so. I could get a disorder, but anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know if disordering a routed unit does anything. I don't think it does. So maybe the net effect of shooting at disordered units is going to be so low uh, that it just is essentially meaningless that they get that extra shot. I don't know. The reaction fire is pretty crappy. All right, so what am I on? I am on, I guess, the French getting to move their center, and I try to figure out what the fuck to do with these guys and get them on the line doing something. <laughs> God only knows. There's what I guess we get with this unit forming a line here, other units, uh, other pieces of that unit not being able to come anywhere closer because they would be within... Well, they're within three already. Yeah, they have to come closer if they can. I don't know if they could. I, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I don't believe. Yeah, I've, I've lost all belief in what's written, you know, how the way this, this rule set works for movement uh, to accept that it works. <laughs> it's like units are just like 
getting scattered all over and clumping into each other and everything. I think these guys maybe had to stay back another hex. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't make it to the line, but it's not because of failure of die roll, which I think is the only legitimate reason that I could bring these guys as far forward as they are, but I, I just don't give a shit. I really don't fucking care. <laughs> Now, the question is, do I want to fire at anything? Well, I'm firing at the river. Um, there's smoke around all of this, just a minus one penalty. So I think what I'm going to do, since there's no, no actual fortification or anything here, I think I'm going to concentrate um, uh, fire on the guys with smoke. Yeah, let's put these two at the guys with smoke. This guy who has no smoke. Uh, firing into smoke, but he's firing into smoke. So he still gets the penalty. Uh, the difference is Let's see. Yeah, every, everybody's gonna be at minus two here except this guy will be at minus one I Could fire multiple rounds these guys both have changing markers on them This guy's disordered. I probably don't want to fire a second round with him But him with changing makes him vulnerable to another shot so I'm thinking about doing that. Speaking of the changing marker uh, rule, that's not on here on the player aid. It's a zero to three or something like that. And I have to look it up. Well, it is a zero to three, I just looked it up. But I have to look it up uh, regularly because it's not contained on the player aid. Uh, again, that thing's very crowded. There's something that's not being used. I think everything's double-sided. Like there's, uh, yeah, everything's uh, double-printed because of the language situation. And and it's kind of odd that it's double-printed on different things, like. <laughs> Like they didn't match it to the same card, so like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that, that, I don't know if that hurts or helps or does anything, but it is kind of weird. You'd think they would double print on the same, same card. Um, I, I could see getting in trouble by not doing that, just in terms of like, um, I don't know, putting two of one language on one card, which would mean you couldn't have both sides. Um, what happens if I do that fire? These are good quality French units, so they have a reasonable chance of succeeding on a seven or better, oh, a seven or less. Uh, however, I'm in an enemy zone of control, <laughs> so not that good anymore, fuck it. Never gonna fire that second round. It's too, it's too risky, it's too risky. Um, the fact that he's changing though is desirable, but how likely am I to actually get a worthwhile result on him with that smoke there? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I feel at a complete loss, like I'm not able to, to push through, which is probably for the best. Like, if I could just punch my way through, game's over, right? So I have to figure out something I can do to get me across. Now, melee is dangerous because they get a shot before me. But at least I don't end up with that, uh, whatever the hell it is. Few de billable, <laughs> which is like, to me, the most terrifying thing, it's like my units are just going to be stuck up there, unable to do a damn thing. They're just going to create more, more and more problems. But I'm not going to be able to dislodge this shit as long as he keeps throwing smoke out with his artillery. And he's not going to fire his artillery twice and get rid of it for me. <laughs> Nobody's going to fire, you know, intensive fire because it's just too risky in this game. I mean, sure, there may be some situations. But what seems like it might be a fairly common occurrence feels like you just don't allow it. You just don't allow it. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can't afford it. Um, I can hope for a breakthrough somewhere else. It looks like the mess of trying to maneuver 
the Austrian center might actually give me a chance to get throw. Speaking of which, we'll put our piece up for that. And they, of course, will go with the far right wing because they want to hold those pink guys to the last and keep screwing me over that way. Austrians get to go first. They'll force the French. Oops. Ah, oh, shit. This is part of this thing. Oops. They didn't move. <laughs> Again. They look yellow, man. They don't look like they're little green corners. They look yellow. And all the yellow is over here. And I thought I had tons of room for yellow to be on the line. Well, I didn't really have room to get them up there. And I may be able to... Uh, shift stuff over here, although I highly doubt it. It looks like I'm already engaged here, which means I'm fucked. Oh, about to do the same thing, so I start lining these guys up. These guys are part of this formation. It looks like they're over there, but... <laughs> There's no real excuse, but here the corner is different. Of course, they, they have red on top or pink on top, which looks very different from these, so I'm like, yeah, they're not similar. You know, <laughs> they're not the same kind of stuff. Now they are, so we'll move them. I don't engage or anything, but I got them dressed so that maybe they can push forward. Oh. There's a picking on the Austrians. I have a lot of choices. Like, I could thrust all three of these into here, um, all with big modifiers, because I brought my wing commander up, who's got a plus two. Um, these two probably want to gang up on this. Question is, do these two want to gang up on this, or do I want to do three on this? I think I'll just do the two each way. Now that's going to cause uh, an artillery counterfire, which, whatever. You know, it happens a little sooner than I would expect, that's all. Using the fire I did, this pair against here, it was a mistake, because I would get flanked fire against this thing, and actually have an advantage against it. Right now I'm trying, and I fucked up, you know, I fuck up everything. Um, I'm trying to find, again, you know, so many things are like just grading wrong that none of it is like really gelling and I'm getting no sense of the game. But I do have some vague memories. For example, I have a vague memory of artillery having its own rules for losses. But I can't find anything. I cannot find anything. I can't find any special artillery rule other than the bombardment, which is not what I'm looking for. Um, I know I just win against artillery if I get to uh, melee it. But Oh, did I miss some reaction fire? Fuck. God damn it. Probably. Somebody retreated away from somebody who fired. Hey. anymore. I just want to, I want to end this fucking thing. Like, I wish I could end my life as easily as I could end this game. Because <laughs> it's a very similar kind of feeling. <laughs> it's miserable, but what am I going to do? But yeah, I mean, I've been playing Raid uh, more. I, I sat outside and read some roles, um, watched some videos, played some Raid. Why? Because I want to avoid playing this shit. Because I dislike it enough that I am avoidant of it. Like, avoidant the way I am of, like, cleaning dishes and stuff like that. It's a, it's less pleasant. I'll give it that much. Or whatever those withdrawal fires are, because trying to deal with that is making me forget to fire on this. And I gotta take care of that. That's gotta happen. Stop pawing through the rolls looking for some miserable thing that I have to remember that I don't don't know if it's there. So I assume I can just shoot the cannons and kill them.
Here's the key point I was looking for. Artillery is immune to disorder. <laughs> I got a disordered result against the artillery with a retreat. Um, I think they're also immune to the retreat from it. So, yeah. Fair enough. I should have shot at the infantry. Um, well, I shot at the artillery. That means the artillery gets to fire back. Good that did. Created some smoke. Uh, that's that. I'm going to do the right wing just to get one more out of the way. I, I can't do the last one. I just can't do it. Um, I don't know what's up with the right wing. Again, I don't even understand what's going on up here. Like, <laughs> at least where infantry is facing infantry, I have a vague idea of what the fuck is happening in the game. But here it's like, oh, well, they can't attack each other, but I don't know. The thing I can do is I can take advantage. This, this isn't a line, but I can move this to get it into a line. And now I can take advantage and do a double shot against this guy, or I could have done a single shot against him, which is better than what I'm going to take. Uh, on my next move. I'm able to just move into here from what I recall because I'm moving from breastworks to breastworks so or whatever. I don't know what the fuck they're even called here. They're called cover level two. They're called readouts. What's the other ones? The other ones are farmhouses. No, entrenchments. Uh, yeah, same sh fucking difference. <laughs> God. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, by moving here, um, I'm able to get concentrated fire against this. Of course, I'll be giving him a chance to shoot back, but that's okay. And the cav, I can't figure out anything it can do. I think they're just like paralyzed. They're like terrified of each other. Essentially nothing happened. Now this is very vulnerable to melee attacks. However, melee attacks are really hard to do. So I'm just counting on him not having the movement points to do it. Because as long as it's infantry here, now this... This thing has like a movement of five though. One, two, three, four, five. But I think there's an extra cost to mailing. Isn't there? Isn't there? I don't fucking know. It's just... In which case, well, if I notice it later, too bad for that artillery, right? <laughs> He does get a shot, so it's not like he's completely out of. Oh, you can almost never, never melee anyway. Uh, but I can against cover. Is there an extra cost to resolve the ratio? No. Somewhere... Eh. Somewhere it gives me a cost, right? Somewhere it tells me how I have to pay. Maybe it's up here. Required number of movement points and in command unit. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. Movement point is equal to the number of movement points to enter the zone, uh, to enter the enemy hex. Enemy zones are not counted in this. Whoa, wait, what? Are zones, do zones have a cost? Fucking hell, if they have a cost, I can't move anywhere. The three movement points doesn't let me, like, close with the enemy unless I'm adjacent to them already, basically. Oh, shit. Okay, this forces that. Zones of control. Have to stop moving. I have to pay a movement point to leave the zone. All kinds of things with TDRs, by, by which they mean training die roll. Before entering an infantry, a cav has to roll. It's really a retreat. It's going to move one from the other. Voluntarily leaving, performing a TDR in an enemy zone of control causes a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> They do not, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any cost for moving into one anyway. Um, good. But I, I have no assurances, you know. I mean, I just, these rules are not, not good, not good for me. They're really giving me a hard time. It's, everything compounds. Everything's compounding uh, to make this uglier. 
I actually thought by taking uh, Europa simulations I would be seeing something kind of interesting. I'm not. I'm seeing a clumsy, cluttered game that's just not any fun. Um, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk away again. Like, I can get through three quarters of the turn and then I'm like, yeah, I can't do the last piece. I just can't do it. But, but I, I started, right? Like, I, I did the last piece of the last turn and then went through all of this, right? I think so, didn't I? Right. And I just got done watching a video on uh, Japan's other suicide weapons. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get this last combo out there. I don't know. Austrians get the pick. They're going to force the French to go first, of course. That's over here. Again, I honestly don't know if much can be done there. I thought it was going to be a, a cakewalk a little while ago, but actually, I'm not so sure. If I can get infantry up to chase those cav away, it will be. Things cav don't have to deal with uh, melee combat. Um, they, I'm sorry, cav don't have to deal with linear rules of combat. And I can launch a melee coming this way. I couldn't do one here, but I think that's going to give me the flanking bonus anyway. I'm not sure. I'll have to fucking look it up like everything else. I'm also going to charge these guns. Now they get a shot at me first using grape shot. And if I'm still there, I get to charge. Maybe I want to bring this other unit. What does that do for me? I'm not sure, because I can only charge with the one unit and that unit gets shot at. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> and we'll try to combine fire and hit this for whatever reason. Shit, I cheated. Yeah, I can't actually. I, I attacked this hex or tried to attack from this direction because I moved into this hex. I'm not allowed to use those. So I forced them back. The cav aren't doing anything there. This charge failed. Calf was eliminated. <laughs> and, well, let's try firepower. <laughs> All to no effect. Ah, oh, <laughs> great. All right, well, now it's the Austrian center's turn. And, um, smoke here. I can't get out anymore. He's not able to fire. The artillery's already fired. Everything else, I can try to do what I can with the cannons that I have. That two was essentially nothing, so now it's time to start doing the cleanups. What do we got? Um, reorg checks, and then the smoke changing, etc. And I guess that's the picture of what we got, huh? Um, have I done everything? I think so. I don't know. Something hidden under here. Utility fired. Oh, I don't know if I checked that guy. I don't think I did. So he gets rid of his disorder. But yeah, we were basically unable to do anything, you know, which feels like most of this game, right? It's really hard to put any pressure anywhere. Um, not really what I was expecting. Uh, we got some units that were unable to recover. A couple of them there. And otherwise, on to another turn. And I guess I just go and do that, huh? We're getting close to here. If the French haven't taken one of their victory locations, they lose. <laughs> Hope they don't. Forced to go first. Keep pushing in this direction. Move these, moved on to these, started moving them. Nope, not their, not their wing, can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. I think, uh, let me just shift this cav down to this flank. We're going to be in trouble, though. We are going to be in trouble. Because we can't extend any further. We're out of units. The French keep pushing down. And this is where their goals are. But, you know, they don't have a hell of a lot of time to get to them. This whole outflanking maneuver has uh, really cost me quite a bit. Do I do another one? I don't know. <laughs> I think I'll go watch another video instead. <laughs>
<laughs> I did the end of the turn. I did an activation. You know, that's good enough. Maybe play some raid. I'm really having a hard time, a hard time wanting to do this at all. But you know, I don't mind so much when it's this shit. It's just like oh, I fucked something up. Too bad. Terrible. Oh, well, wait. oh shit! This battery didn't charge. It's all the way up to <coughs> Tuesday today. Um, I had this weird lump up here on my chest. It seems to have gone away. I don't know what the fuck. I like many, many worries about what it might be, and hopes that you know it might be cancer. But you know, worries that like uh, somehow I, I I got bit by a tick and it was Lyme disease or something, because had some similarities to when I had that. Um, but anyway, uh, it's been, it's been a while since I played for a number of reasons. One, I don't like the game. <laughs> I do not enjoy. Um, but also, uh, Raid has been very demanding and giving me a good excuse not to play. This is how I get sucked into Raid. I'm playing something I don't like. And I'm like, well, what else do I do with my time? You know, and this isn't big enough for me to go run down and set up an XX game or something the way Summer Storm was. But also, I had to go shopping yesterday. Uh, it didn't wipe me out like last time because weather was cooler. <laughs> I didn't even buy a drink for the way home. I just brought the water in my teacup which almost got me all the way home. Um, and uh, then today I'm supposed to go for a walk, which I, I got a couple of friends I'm supposed to go out with from the bar. And I don't know. Well, one, one the, well, anyway. Uh, so let me get started. Let me swap my batteries because this is no good. And I know you're getting like more bullshit life story stuff. Some people like it. Most of you probably don't care for it, but that's okay. Most of you probably aren't here anymore. Uh, after all my cussing and, and complaining about this thing. Um, but yeah, I, I don't expect to get through more than this turn today. I've got to be able to jump on, do some raid again. Uh, a little later. I, I have an event that I have to <coughs> complete before I go uh, for, for, for the walk. Oh, but okay. Now we have a charged battery. I'm also in the midst of doing laundry because I have so few clothes. I have like one pair of shorts left that I can wear. <laughs> uh, you got a couple that I can wear around the house, but they don't have a back pocket, which makes them no good. I really have to get to a Goodwill. So what have I picked? I picked the center wing again here uh, to try to work my way across the way I've been doing. And then over here the reserve once again to try to throw in a defense against uh, the Spaniards that are hitting me. Austrians get first go. They're going to actually take it this time because I want to get those guys up before this hits. The French are being monomaniacal and just always going this way. Whatever, sometimes you face a player who isn't really uh, making what you think are the best choices, but they feel like the best ones for me as the French just because it's the only way I can keep uh, what I'm doing in any kind of semblance of order. And the net effect of all that. While some artillery ended up actually destroying another unit, I picked on a little one line unit <laughs> just to drive it away. Uh, then over here we combined fire against uh, fuck. I cheated. Put that there. Would have been about the right result. I combined fire against this unit and drove him back. You can see I got a changing marker and then an exchange here that I probably shouldn't have even made because I'm at a disadvantage but I'll leave the changing marker there because I probably would have just chosen not to make the attack. Um, that puts me then on the French center. That's where this kind of movement system with all these restrictions and everything, and yeah, I, I, I get why they're there, uh, but why it gets on my nerves. So I'm like trying to get this cav forward to hit maybe this cav here, but the problem is I actually can't because there's infantry on both sides of that cav. So fuck it, I just can't do it. 
Um, but yeah, I start counting my movement and then I see, oh wait, I can't just target this. I've got to look at that. Not that I could charge or anything anyhow, but I could at least come in contact. And unlike with the breastworks, I could fight over the stream. It's not pleasant, but I could do it. But otherwise, I feel like uh, this whole formation, I'm trying to find a place to use it. It should be way over on the flank. Remember, this is the cab formation that I can't figure out where to what to do with. And this whole uh, center uh, formation is unable to find a job, essentially, because of this fucking cav. I don't have a lot else. I have some small amount of infantry there. Of course, this is the formation that's taken a couple of hits, I guess. No, this is from over there. It's hard. These little corners, I just can't fucking tell them apart. In terms of movement, I'm moving up against here. This is sort of the corner where the Spaniards are hitting. Looks powerful. But these Spanish of the center formation, they're out of place. They were stuck behind these. So I start shifting them down. I also, um, I'm pulling this infantry forward, but basically I have one formation I, I thought this was part of this because so I actually have a fair number of infantry but the problem is I can't find my way to the battlefield basically this fucking cab is in my way <laughs> um, it's not really in my way in, in any real sense right now but it's just not able to get anywhere and I, I can't really project it onto the field because it has no use right? <laughs> meanwhile these guys are coming around because they can't get through the Spaniards up here trying to find their way into position. It's a lot of it feels like it's the setup, but that seems to be getting further and further from the truth because these guys were set up down here. I could have just channeled them straight down, but I thought they were going to hit the river here and um, uh, the Spanish uh, left wing was going to be hitting more along here. It's just not what's turned out um, to happen because of the quantity of troops. But I want to use that quantity of troops to, to facilitate my outflanking movement. Uh, it's just, it's not happening. And I got guys like ramming into each other's ass and everything without anything. And then I've got like this poor guy. This guy I think is part of this formation. I don't know what the hell he's doing way back here. <laughs> And I can't walk by this because it's within three of the enemy. Even though I'm completely screened, nothing can shoot me. I can't afford the two movement points, and I'd have to roll a die to get in there. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, yes, I could afford the two movement points. It wouldn't be any worse than skirting around it. But it's just this horrible, like, nothing is working the way it looks like it should work when I look at the battlefield. When I look at the battlefield, this looks like all clear planes that I should be able to walk through. None of it is like that. It's got like this hidden aspect of like, there is a lot of terrain being represented here in a way that just doesn't look like terrain to me. You know, I'm, I'm not used to some little building and presumably it's a bigger compound than that, but these are farmhouses is what they're called. Now, <laughs> again, I think we're talking villas and stuff like that with walled gardens and all kind of crap like that. Something, you know, but yet think I could walk by it. I wouldn't have to go take an occupation of it and pay that extra movement point and roll a die because maybe I'm worried that there's somebody in it because the opponent's there, even though I've cleared that territory already and moved through it. Yeah, I... <laughs> Oh, and the next one's going to be fucking fun too, isn't it? All right, let's do some firing, I guess. Although, I don't know what effect it's going to be. This guy's marked as fired, but he didn't actually fire. That's why there's no smoke on him. And a couple of comparative choices I could make. I have two units. They can fire into this. There's no terrain to help them. There's smoke, though. That's a minus two. That's as good as entrenchments and whatnot. Do you have a leader to cancel out one of it? Blah, blah, blah. But I have choices, like, do I want to shoot the infantry underneath, which would get a shot back um, at one of my units, or do I want to shoot the artillery that I have less chance of doing anything against? And it's, it's just a, a hard call. 
Um, I would not, I, I, I don't know if I actually have less chance because if I get a hit of a six or higher with this unit, I do, I, I permanently eliminate the artillery. If I get a hit, that same unit would be reduced in column against the infantry because there's two lines of it. Uh, in both cases I'd have smoke. You know, I kind of, I don't really just want to, I don't really just want to retreat them. So I think I'm going to fire both my shots at the artillery in the hopes of wiping that out. And I may do the same down here, although I could combine against this thing. It's only at a smoke minus one, although this unit would be firing at minus two, and that would mean that this unit would get shot back at better odds than it's shooting, and all kind of shit like that. If I split, fire at the artillery, there's no return fire, and fire at this, I'm firing at even odds, maybe weakening his line. That's all I can really hope to do right now, is try to get lucky and bust through here because it really looks like it's nasty. Now, I am making some ground up here. <laughs> There's no question about that. This is frozen. It's useless. There's nothing I can do. It's cav versus cav behind earthen works and they're like staring at each other without anybody able to do a damn thing for the most part. Uh, there is some infantry that's trying to, to to take advantage of the situation. But maybe the left can actually punch in up here. Put a threat up there that'll scare the Austrians into having to defend that more carefully. Because I'm coming up to this time and I don't have one of my chosen places. So I'm getting really close to the automatic loss. Pressure coming on, I may need to start taking those risks that I haven't been taking in terms of firing a second round of fire combat. <laughs> the problem is, if, you know, if we get these few de billabon or whatever on us, kind of equally, it's just to the French's disadvantage because I'm the ones having to press forward. However, I do have a surfeit of troops. It might make sense to at least fire these guys and this one has a changing marker, so let's do it. <laughs> All right, what's that gonna mean? Well, the second volley, I make a TDR, and if the roll is successful, the unit fires the same procedure as the first fire, otherwise it gets the marker. So I will just roll my way down. These two are gonna fire against this, this against this again, this against this, the changing unit, because I could actually break him more likely. Let's start over here. So he is at, it would normally be seven. It goes down to six for a zone of control, but I've got a leader, so it's a seven. And I'm fine. The next one down, he's fine. This guy is a six, which is not good. Now, the rules are not clear on this. I am going to drop a smoke marker because I think that's how they're to be read. That that initial second fire, well, second volley always throws smoke, right? No, I don't know. I can't fucking remember a damn thing. There's so much here. First artillery barrage, uh, fire at will. Yeah, so in the event of the appearance of the marker of Feu de Billabon, a smoke marker is placed. That's clear from here. Elsewhere, it makes it kind of imply that maybe the Feu de Billabon remains as a smoke marker. I don't think so. I think that's just like me misreading something that's kind of uh, fuzzily written. And then this unit. Now, this was firing at a fired artillery they're not gonna to get to shoot back. <laughs> but here, if I get a few debillable, this thing would still have an opportunity to return fire if it wants. 
Uh, we get to shoot? Okay. So now, this is the only unit that gets a chance to fire back. I'm going to also roll for it. What's its chances? The same uh, 7 for Austria, plus 1, so a 6 because of uh, being in zone. And he's going to be fine. And now I'll resolve these additional layer of fires. I don't expect much to come of them, but I feel like I'm under too much pressure not to start adding the risk. At least managed to get something done. We killed one of the Austrian artillery, but we got driven back here. Nothing else happened. That is the end of this phase. I'm exhausted again. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel like, like I look and I'm like, oh, what did I do? I did a little sliver of troops. Uh, who, who was it? I did a little sliver of troops here trying to fill in gaps. Didn't actually manage anything. And I did a little sliver of troops here that engaged. Sure, I moved some other pieces around, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting anywhere with that movement. It feels like I'm blundering around behind my own lines trying to figure out, hey, dude, where can we get? Can, can you guys move over? Can we get in? <laughs> it just, it feels fucking ridiculous. And yeah, I mean, it's not the first time that I've just, had to walk away after two activations. And I gotta be careful too. This guy, I think he's in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I set it up exactly in range, but I gotta be careful to keep an eye on this because he's got a wide span that he's holding. Oh, he might not be here. One, two. Oh, fuck. Okay, he's got a big range. I don't know. I, I think those guys are just out of command now. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to keep your army in command when you're trying to do these outflanks. And it doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like I've got a lot of... Uh, you know, I'm covering a lot of ground. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of ground on this map is kind of the problem. Like, my mindset is on the summer smoke type stuff. Uh, summer storm, which... You know, it was just huge compared to this. Anything within the size of this map panel, you'd be in command. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know about it here. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, you know, what I was, what I kept, I, I thought I was set up okay, but I seem to have drifted down too far to keep him in command, and I fucked that up. And that's just too fucking bad, I guess. I'll put that marker up here. That means his whole wing is kind of fucked and can't do shit, which is fine. It can't do shit anyway. Um, this guy is in command though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Barely, barely. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I cannot command a whole line across the board, which I would have thought I could do somehow or another. Um, Oh well. And you know what's worse? I can't disengage either. You can't disengage if you're out of command. <laughs> so these guys are just stuck here doing nothing. Um, am I in range with the, the Austrians? Yeah, they have kind of an interior line situation. And I'm pretty sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, barely. And then this is relatively close. I, I think what the thing is is that I keep focusing on the extreme where I'm trying to do the outflank or where I'm trying to react to it. And I forget about the fact that, yeah, I gotta keep everybody in command. Oops. Okay, next activation, same rules as I've been following. Gonna do the right wing first. I want those artillery fires uh, to come at the best point that they can. Um, and for the French, continuing along the path. Oh, those out of command guys aren't gonna do anything anyway. See what we got. We got an Austrian call. I want to make them go first. Uh, the French go first. The way the terrain is set up, these Spanish advances barely were able to make anything. I marched into here. He's going to be an unsupported unit. He's going to try to take this artillery out here. Uh, not enough movement points to melee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like these guys weren't able to come in, so my line wasn't correctly formed. 
so I'm not going to have so I'm going to have unsupported fire there. Uh, wasn't able to like just everything is kind of difficult. Like these guys tried to advance, some of them came forward, some of them unable to move through any of this stuff, even though it's kind of behind. I would say it's kind of behind my lines, but it's not really because there's an artillery here that can hit them. So I'm okay with them like seeking cover and everything and having a harder time moving. I have a lot more trouble with this guy who wasn't able to move here. There is an artillery there as well though. So yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. Um, and th this is an expensive hex to move into. So it's uh, three movement points to move into. Of course, this unit has five movement points, but he gets stopped by the hex. He's not willing to go in there. He's just not willing to. It's cover. Too scary to go into the cover. <laughs> um, it does make sense in the linear period because you basically have to break your formation to take advantage of cover. All right, let's, uh, let's try to do some shooting. I... Shit. <laughs> I don't know what I can do. So this advance here, there's no reason to even fire at it. Between the smoke, the defensive position, the unaligned fire, I just got nothing. So I'm like off on my own and getting screwed now <laughs> because these guys didn't advance forward. Now, I probably should have moved these first because then I could have gotten like coordinated fire, etc. Here, we got shot back by the artillery. We're in changing. We probably aren't going to shoot back again. <sighs> Here might be worth shooting a second round. I didn't fire with these. I fired with this and retreated a unit that was my one big success. Do I want to go after that artillery? Hmm. It could not fire back because it's not facing. So uh, I would be firing, I would be making a check against Spaniards, which is not good. It's like 60% only. Um, I'd be firing on this table there's no modifiers for depth for artillery at minus three. I couldn't get anything better than a DR. There's no reason to shoot. A DR is not going to have any effect. And in fact, I shouldn't have shot there. Same, same thing with this thing. You know, it's almost impossible to do anything to artillery uh, when it's in defensive terrain, especially if it's already fired and has its smoke out. <laughs> then, then it's uh, uh, fine. So I think this is the net effect as I pushed one unit back, that's it, and I got hurt a little bit here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. For the Austrians to figure out what they can and can't do here, I have to worry about what out of command means. So I start looking for it. I find out of command commanders and in command units. <laughs> I'm looking for something that tells me something about out of command units, and I'm not finding it. Let's look through it. Uh, that extends. There's no need for combat units be, to be a distance. A unit part of a formation without a commander. It's an out of command and eff suffers effects that are scattered all over the fucking place. Great. Thanks for putting them here. At least I have the references. But man, it, this is one of those places where duplicating at least some of the information would be useful. So now I have to hunt down each of these references and figure out what it is I am and am not allowed to do. Um, and out of command commanders, a commander who's beyond the range of the superior cannot extend command to subordinate commanders or units. These are out of command for all reasons. And I believe, yeah, <laughs> uh, beyond this is counter can act within, without other restrictions. WC must check its, its in command at time of activation. I'm going to have to try to move my, my wing commander in, into command when it comes to be the French turn for their left wing. But let me try to figure out a summary of all the impacts of being out of command. Would have been pretty useful. They could have put a pretty light sentence in there that would have covered everything that all these references covers, which is that I'm allowed to leave an enemy zone of control, but I can't enter one. I'm going to have to move to get back into command, more or less. 
um, it, it is kind of more complicated. I kind of see how, how it goes, but a lot of these are repetitions of each other. So uh, the combat ones are all basically saying I can't initiate combat. There is one exception to that. If I have a, one of those weird little L's up here, and I, I don't, as far as I can see, um, they're allowed to initiate fire combat. So what does all that mean? I don't know. But I'm allowed to fire defensively. The thing I have to look up that I didn't think about. I got this artillery here. Can I turn and fire? <laughs> A lot of games allow that. I'm not sure here. I'm not sure how to find that. Again, the rules organization is kind of painful to cope with. Um, this is a hard kind of question in a lot of games is, you know, where would you find this piece? But I know in this game, I'm gonna have a particularly difficult struggle with that. Well, that actually wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> yes, I looked under the artillery fire rules first, but that was my own fault. Under artillery movement, artillery units move like other units, but at the end of their movement, they must face front towards the vertex of the hex. Um, this maneuver is not considered movement and does not involve the expenditure of movement points. I think that means it doesn't flip me, so I will be able to turn this way. Of course, that's not this unit, that's that unit. So, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself for no apparent reason. The net effect of it all is, these guys I couldn't figure out what to do with, and there's nothing that I really can do with them. So, I've got these two infantry, I'm gonna just gang up on, on that. Uh, I guess these are dragoons and fired them. Up to a counter mix situation here. Um, changing around the other side of smoke. Do I have other smoke counters? Because I'm out of changing counters, but I don't think there are any smoke counters left. The smoke and changing are on the same thing. There are just not enough of them. Um, this unit was forced into changing, but then it eventually got disordered by the fire, but this unit is changing. I gotta just throw something on there uh, for it. But that's all that happened is I drove them back a little bit. We flipped that over. It sounds like my laundry may be done, which means <laughs> I won't do the final activation yet. Let's squeeze out the last uh, activation so that I can load things up this turn. Um, Austrians first. They're gonna force the French. And the French aren't gonna be able to do anything, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we may, we're allowed to withdraw, which uh, I gotta figure out where to put him so he'll be in command, maybe in command later, and just pull him back, I think. I think we'll just leave things like this. This guy, it's funny because you kind of don't actually have to keep a formation in much in the way of command. I guess the line does that pretty well for infantry. For cav, you've got a lot of room you can space your, your cav out um, around. And it's not like there's some range he has to be in. He could be just about anywhere on the board. Like, he could be way over here and still be commanding those troops, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Uh, but he would have to be within range of this guy. So I could just pull him back, and he could be dispatching orders from the rear if I, if I need to. Um, that's not advantageous because I get his sergeant bonus and his firepower bonus. Not gonna be able to do a damn thing though. Then we'll come to the center. And doubt that there's a lot I can do here. This guy's stuck. <laughs> These guys, I'm having trouble getting them into line, like, you know, but I might be able to shift my formation a little bit because zones do not go into this shit. The results that involve changing results on them I don't have the counters to support it. I didn't feel like digging them out when there's not much. Also, some smoke that should have been generated from these fires. But we managed to eliminate uh, three more strength points of Spaniards. And uh, this whole flank is beginning to look pretty well defended. With the out-of-command units pulling back, not that they were able to do much anyway because they're all fucking cav in the wrong place. <laughs> 
the story of this battle, uh, Franco-Spanish have their calves just in the wrong place. So, so do the Austrians up here. So, you know, it's like, it's not what, you wouldn't want it there if there was infantry attacking it and probably want to keep this uh, left reserve or whatever in reserve and actually pump the left infantry into here, scare that cab away, just take this area. That, that would be, like, if I was replaying this, I would focus up here, I think. Um, because of the horrible deployment situation that that Austrian cav has. But I saw an opportunity for an outflank. That's turned out to be kind of chimeric, whereas what's up here is a little different. Uh, that puts me to the end, I guess, unless I wanted to fire again. And as the defender, I do not want to uh, get my units screwed up on fire. Oops. There's infantry here. Oh, this couldn't have been here. I don't fucking know. Let me just pull some of this back. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know when this would have had to retreat. This infantry has been there for a while. It's just the idea of infantry scaring Cav off. <sighs> Makes sense again. But it's another cumbersome little feature that I'm having a lot of trouble mentally keeping in hand. That means we're gonna uh, do the cleanup shit and we'll do that and then we'll load this thing up. And I think that's where we're sitting at this point. The Fudy Bill, Bill Ball does not go away. I don't know how it does. I think, if I, I think I have to withdraw for it to go away or something. Most of the units, I think everything that recovered to the extent that it could. Uh, I don't know where we talk about removing those. How do you get rid of it? As long as it carries it, it cannot move fire or melee. Now, I know that it very specifically does not get removed um, during the marker removal phase. But I have I have no recall as to how this reorgs. It's not reorg. Oh, Jesus. Like, there's probably some step that I've skipped that's not in the role, that's not in the sequence of play, but there's something it could have done to remove it. For each unit, I don't know, I may just have it forever now. It may just be firing forever in the game. Oh, there we go. At each subsequent activation of the formation, before the movement segment, the player may do a TDR to try to remove it. Okay. So when I activate again, I, get, I think he picked it up this turn. In fact, I'm sure he did. When I activate that wing again, he gets a chance uh, to cool off and stop firing. Now, they... They only have like 24 rounds, you know? <laughs> maybe 48. I, I don't know about European uh, forces, but they don't have a lot. They don't have a lot of ball, uh, 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 balls and powder with them. And if they're firing at will over the course of an hour now, this is what's really weird. You get like two shots per minute if you're firing as fast as you possibly can. The few, uh, this fire at will kind of makes me think that you're firing close to that, right? But you're not doing drilled fire or anything along those lines. So I don't know. But anyway, within the course of an hour, you will be out of ammo. Um, <laughs> so that has to stop, right? It just has to. Uh, but it may be some kind of worse panic than disorder and whatnot. Disorder runs you away. I don't know what the hell they're doing here if they don't have their gun. You know, if they're out of ammo, you'd think they'd run. Um, and in the course of an hour, and each turn is an hour uh, of firing, you only, you only get like, you know, you get two, sh two volleys 
on your attack, you might defend, let's say the enemy is the worst possible enemy that you can think of, they might be hitting you with two different um, wings at the same time. <laughs> Whereas they probably would devote to your adjacent units or whatever instead. But you might be being hit by two different wings at the same time. Which would mean you'd get, make it three if you've got like artillery mist stacked like I do throughout throughout a lot of this. Um, so, and, and I mean conceivably four. But anyway, you get to fire two volleys on your offense and maybe four more volleys on your defense total. Now, those volleys, you know, I'm not saying they're one shot each or anything like that. But if they're much more than that, you're going to be running out of ammo relatively quickly. And there are no ammo resupply rules. Uh, I assume that's all being kind of handled very abstractly. And the idea is they're just pumping ammo up there. But, you know, if a unit is no longer um, firing by drill, they're also not in a condition where you can resupply them easily. So I find the idea of this kind of lasting for a long time to be really, really unlikely. And I'm willing to accept the fact that units that are in the line are constantly having, uh, you know, a, a, as they're withdrawn from the line and uh, deeper ranks are put forward, they're constantly having ammo replenished throughout that. That's fine. But you're not going to manage that in this kind of chaotic fire system situation. Uh, the, the guys who are firing are, uh, you know, and not under drilled fire, they're not in a position where they're going to be able to withdraw calmly, uh, receive their ammo, and then run back up there and do the same damn thing. <laughs> it's just not believable. Um, so I kind of don't feel like that, that operates properly. Well, more than kind of. All right, that's it for now. We're going to load this one up. We're getting real close uh, to the end of the line, though. Right? This has to move forward. So we got two more turns for the French to take one of these locations. I don't think they can do it. I just don't think they can do it. Uh, this outflank has been a total failure in terms of, like, it's not even bringing the enemy to uh, to bear. It's just been forcing them back. The blundering around of my units trying to find a way to the battle <laughs> has not done much towards getting me um, any kind of any kind of punch. And you know the way I play a game. I kind of assume that I'm going to be able to play a tactical battle reasonably functionally. And this system is really getting in the way of me being able to functionally fight. Now, compare that to something like Great Battles of History or Musket and Pike, you know, obviously different eras. Um, They banish all their fears, although I felt like I was getting a grip on how to how to fight the battle you know, fairly early um, in that one, even if I was making some mistakes. Those other games, I might screw up one small battle in in the in the box, but by the time I get to the second or third battle, I've learned some lessons and I'm fighting it out. Here I would have to replay the same scenario because it's not like a multi-scenario multi, uh, uh, multi box. And that's really unlikely to happen for me, you know? So I think I could have struggled. I don't remember too much, but I vaguely remember struggling a little bit with musket and pike. Obviously, I fucked some stuff up with the men of iron, even simple system that that is, and was able to correct uh, some of those errors as I went deeper into the box. Um, 
that's not going to happen with a game like this. What's going to happen with a game like this is I'm going to kind of say, hmm, wow, that was unpleasant. And I'm not going to really remember that it's because I didn't have a grip on the system. Now, honestly, I'm almost done with the game as far as I'm concerned. And I still don't feel like I have a really good grip on the me mechanisms involved in playing the system reasonably well. What I do have a grip on is how I would maneuver my starting units as the, as the Franco-Spanish to get a more likely to be effective attack. One which is desperately at odds with how the deployment, the initial deployment actually is. The initial deployment is what led me to this kind of situation where I've got a fucking cav force that's stuck looking for a way to get to the flank where it might be vaguely useful maybe. <laughs> In fact, this whole center wing because of that one heavy cav unit should have been on the left. Uh, I don't think that's what historically happened because they call it the center wing. Um, the fact that it was called the center wing is why I made a choice to push it through the center and to move the left wing, uh, I'm sorry, the right wing, over to the right and do the outflank with it. Well, the right wing is a lot less effective at the outflank than that very, very heavy cav formation that was in the center uh, wing. You can make arguments, yeah, you know, look at Banish All Their Fears, you, you might have cav in the back or something like that. You might even attack with it. Uh, uh, the second, second battle in that, there was like a massive cav attack that just caused nothing but problems to deal with. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it uh, infantry is dominant in this period. Cav has been neutered. The cav charge is not terribly effective. Uh, the Kakal has, has been retired as an effective, <laughs> if it ever was, um, uh, technique for bringing the enemy to, to bear. And yeah, you just, you don't have that like heavy charge that you see um, later in the Napoleonic era, which is a peculiarity to tell you the truth, where, where Cav was that effective. Again, you see it in some other eras previously, but kind of after the Napoleonic era, Cav loses its, its, its power and it's lost its power here. Firepower is king here, right? <laughs> Uh, why is it king? Well, mainly because of soft tactics. Uh, the cav isn't trained to go up against um, the infantry in the same way. And the infantry also isn't trained to make that kind of gung-ho charge that would later happen in the Napoleonic era. Um, they keep that. They keep that for a long time. <laughs> that lasts in, <laughs> through World War I even. Uh, but yeah. But in, in, in terms of the game, I'm just struggling so hard. Early decisions have put me in a bad position, and I still don't feel like I can manipulate this system in a way that I can make it sort of fluidly playable or anything like that. It's really clunky. Not, I don't know, it's not as mechanically painful as a summer storm was. It's more like, it's, it's not so much, you know, failures to be able to read this. I think I'm getting it, I'm getting a, a handle for it. It's not the Poochie map and the big stacks and all that. It's not all that kind of problem. It's just the linear, the, the rules regulating linear movement are making it really, really difficult to shift forces around. Now that is actually totally reasonable, but the problem is that initial setup and my uh, assumptions from it and what I tried to do with it based on that initial setup and based on these words here has gotten me into a position where I just don't see how I can break through the line. I just don't see it. I decided to step aside and take a look in the historical notes 
to see what this is like. I remembered it feeling very dry. I'll tell you one thing it doesn't do. It doesn't cover the battle. <laughs> There's no discussion of the history of the battle. It's a much higher level. I mean, there's a little bit here, right? They finally decided to block the Franco-Hispanics in Pienza. Uh, left the Po and began to move into the territory, hoping... It... I don't even know if it tells you about the battle. I think here. But if there is, it's like a sentence somewhere. It's giving you the whole story of the war, going from political events, etc., which may be helpful to many people. I don't know everything that's in here, that's for sure, uh, especially of the Italian campaign, but it's, it's like really not giving you a lot of the context of this battle. And, you know, I, I, kind, of, I kind of would expect something like this to have maybe a very brief thing about everything that's going on that gets me to about where they talk the part that comes to here that's a one two call it two and a half pages total right uh, is stuff that I feel like should probably be a paragraph or two then the battle itself should probably be um, at least a couple paragraphs, two or three paragraphs. That's what the game is about, right? It's about this battle. Uh, the setup for the battle, the after effects, and, and the battle itself should all be uh, about the same size as maybe whatever is uh, to the lead up. And then maybe the concluding effects of where the war was gonna go or whatever should be maybe a, a, a a paragraph, probably more like a couple of sentences, but whatever. You know, um, I feel like this is so unfocused on what I'm looking at that I didn't learn much. Um, I feel like I was reading through it. I mean, there's some stuff that I just know, the political context, etc. I know a lot about. I know a lot less about the maneuvers in Italy and whatnot that it's going over. Um, the alliances that are happening in Italy, which is kind of interesting, but it's written very dryly and I, I didn't get much out of it at all. But anyway, was hoping to be able to at least see who won the battle. I'm not sure. I'm not able to find enough about the battle uh, to tell. I mean, I'm hearing the one party who paid the price for this change of policy. Well, that sounds like I'm way too late. The Navi, you know, that feels like it's too late. Uh, Philip V dies here. Okay, that's too late. They finally decided to block the franco hispanians at Piacenza. Passed on the left of the Po and began to move into the territory. Like, just not seeing the fight for the city. Here we've got the Franco-Hispanic concentrated in the vicinity of Piacenza. They fought a violent battle against the Austrians. Okay, this is it. By which they were completely defeated. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> they lose. But there's almost that this is this is the battle. This is the battle. Uh it's like two, three sentences. That's it. A anything surrounding the battle, right? <laughs> Great. Thanks. Okay, up it goes. The reason that I say great in that sarcastic term is that I kind of expect, look, when I'm struggling with a game and I'm not able, when I don't feel like I'm able to get anything good about the context uh, uh, and what to do within the system, um, I want to understand a little bit about what historically happened. I want to understand, a l I also, not just historical stuff, but I also might want to look at designer's notes. There aren't any that are of any use. I don't think there are any at all. Of course, waste, and now, I'm gonna say wasted, 
from my point of view, they wasted a lot of information on the orders of battle, on how to paint minis if you have them for these guys. Bibliography, hey, whatever, you know. Um, I think a bibliography is more of a uh, academic type thing in the sense that like from my point of view, there is nothing in this booklet that I really need except the stuff that I needed to figure out which units are what, who's, who's dragoons, who's lights, stuff like that, because the counters don't represent the information very effectively. Um, being able to try to understand how I have to de uh, decipher what the information that's on the counters. Um, but yeah, I'm thoroughly disappointed with the ancillary information that's provided. The political context, sure, that's fine, but I could go wiki it, you know? I, 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 I could look up the, this portion of the war. Um, no designer's notes, no clear information about the, con the real context of the battle at a more, you know, at, at a level that might impact my play at all. No information about the battle itself, except that, look, the Franco-Spanish lost. And a whole lot of paper wasted. I'm not going to count this, you know. Um, I'm not sure why the game would include both an English and an Italian rulebook in every copy. I think it makes sense to choose one, but maybe it's cheaper for them to give you a whole nother rulebook. But... I don't count that either positive or negative in any sense of the word. I can see very few cases where someone wants the game with both rule books. And they could always order a set, uh, the, the spare rule book if they need. You know, basically, if you had someone who's a native English speaker playing against someone who's a native Italian speaker, and they probably both speak English because it's the lingua franca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lingua, a Latin word. Franca, also probably the Latin for Frank, but representing the French as a word for how English is used now. Oh, that kind of thing just amuses me. But yeah, this, uh, look, just not, not terribly useful. Not terribly useful. Whereas a little bit of discussion of why the system works the way it does would do a lot towards helping me understand how to, how to manipulate the forces. I found that uh, Banish All Their Fears did a pretty good job of, of giving me that kind of information. I don't know if it was in the designer's notes alone. Um, it was also within the game. There was a feel of giving you some of a clue about why the mechanisms are what they are, and that helps ground you in terms of the, the decision-making. Um, and then understanding what I'm up against. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe the Fran Franco-Spanish lose because they put their fucking calf in the center of their army where it can't do anything in this, uh, in this era. But, yeah. All right, once again, we'll try to send this 